All right, so the information that is in this triangle is an angle and its opposite, which means that the tangent and sine functions are gonna be super useful. So let me just write out a couple equations which I'm probably about to use. One is that the sine of 35 is going to be equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and that the tangent of 35, oh, I shouldn't have written that up there. The tangent of 35 is gonna be equal to opposite over adjacent. So right there, there's two values that uh, we could possibly get solving for these. C would be equal to four over the sine of 35. And this, A would be equal to four over the tangent of 35. So let me just go ahead and do those. Four divided by the sine of 35 degrees, 6.974. Is it tan over 4 or is it 4 over tan? 4 over tan. Times A. Whenever you're solving for a denominator, you can switch the denominator with the opposite side. Oh, yeah. Here's how I remember that. I remember that to this day that you can switch the opposite side in the denominator. No kidding. That's actually how I remember it. Anyway. Uh, so I've got 6.974 for C. For A, that'll be 4 divided by the tangent of 35 degrees, and that's 5.713. So if I'm recording values, just go straight to the bottom here. I've got values for A, B, and C now. A is 5.713. B was 4 and C was 6.974. Speaking of those basic values, this is 90, that's 35. There can only be one angle that fits there, and that would be 55. Because 55 plus 35 equals 90. All together, that's 180. So theta is 35, and phi is 55. At this point, the rest of this is just one big calculator exercise because all the geometry is done. So, without further ado, I shall now obliterate this line of trig questions. Theta is 35, so I need the sine of 35, 0.574. The cosine of 35, 0.819. The tangent of 35, 0 0.700. The cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. That's 1.743. Oops, there we go. Secant would be the reciprocal of the cosine. 1.221. And cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. 1.428. Now, since I've just entered all those values into the calculator in order to get them, I think I'm going to do these phi values differently. Instead of using my calculator, I'm just going to switch up values from this chart. So opposite and adjacent have switched places, so sine and cosine can switch places. The cosine of theta is the sine of phi. The sine of theta is the cosine of phi. And the cotangent of theta is the tangent of phi. Now then, the cosecant of phi would be the secant of theta. The secant of phi would be the cosecant of theta. And the cotangent of phi would be the tangent of theta. And that is the first triangle complete. Okay, second triangle time. Okay, so this next one, 
The information we have is, again, a side and an angle. I want to see if I can't take a different approach to this triangle, just so you get a variety of ways to go. I started out by getting the other two sides both with trigonometry. I have to use trigonometry to get one of the sides. So I guess I will do, um, I'll do B. I'll just try and figure out what B is. Now, according to this angle, 40 degrees, B is the adjacent. That's the opposite. That's the adjacent. So the cosine of 40 degrees would be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And that means that if you multiply both sides by 7, you'd get B. That 7 times the cosine of 40 is 5.362. So now that we've got that side, 5.362, this one you could get by the Pythagorean theorem like this. It's the square root of 7 squared minus 5.362 squared. That 6 looks really ugly, I know. So if I enter it into the calculator just like that, let me show you what I get. The square root of 7 squared minus 5.362 squared. 4.499, although the digit following the 9 is an 8. So that actually rounds up to 4.500. Now, I want to demonstrate something, because I gave you um, uh, the instruction to give three decimal places, and I want to explain why that is. So this number right there was already rounded, right? I did 7 times the cosine of 40. That had 10 decimal places in it. I want you to watch what happens when I do this Pythagorean um, formula exercise using 7, which was exact, and this number with 10, I think that's 10, uh, decimal places instead. So if I square that, can't really see it. Uh, can't really see it very well. Oy. Okay. How's that? Better? Yeah. All right. So, so that's that squared, but with all the decimal places. So if I do the square root of 7 squared minus that number, I get 4.4995. So the difference between completely perfect, I shouldn't say completely perfect, as good as the calculator can do, and three decimal places was the difference between 4.4998 and 4.4995. Not a big deal. Oh, there we go. So this right here is with three digits rounded. That right there is when I didn't round at all. Pretty good. It's too close to see my thumbs up, but that was a thumbs up. Let's see what happens if we round this too much. So if you only round to the tenths place, that turns into 5.2. Four, right? 5.362. Let's just make that 5.4. So if we do the square root of 7 squared minus 5.4 squared, look at what you get. Square root of 7 squared minus 5.4 squared, 4.454. That's really different. Now, obviously, it's relatively different. It's like less than a tenth off. But like, if you got that answer, but I got that answer, we look like we disagree. And if someone else is getting this, and you're getting that, and you're like working together or comparing answers, you might get a little anxious thinking maybe I'm doing something wrong. If you're consistent with your rounding practices, you're not going to have these discrepancies. Three decimal places should be enough to make sure that you're sufficiently correct without going overboard with precision. So that's why three decimal places is my recommendation. 
this is too much rounded, that's good, that's the official answer, that's the length of B for this triangle. So let me go ahead and record that. So um, C is given, that 7, um, and B was just calculated at 4.500. I'm writing all those decimal places just because I want to be sure that that's three decimal places and not something I improperly rounded. A. Oh, I'm sorry. That's A was 4.5. B was 5.362. My mistake. Okay, so now that we've got those three numbers, let's go ahead and get the angles. Fifth, uh, 90, 40, 50. yeah, it's got to be 50. So that means theta is 50, phi is 40. Okay, and now to not use the sine or cosine or tangent buttons on my calculator at all. Because now that I have A, B, and C, I can express all these ratios as actual ratios because the triangle that I'm working with looks like this. C equals 7, B equals 5.362, and A equals 4.500. That means that the sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. That would be 5.362 over 7, which the calculator says 5.362 over 7, 0.766, all three decimal places that I want. If instead I had actually done the sine of 50, I would still get that. 0.766. Does that show up well enough? Yes. I would still get that number. Okay? So I'm not going to use the trig functions on my calculators, on my calculator, on my calculator to get these numbers. I'm just going to plug these numbers in. So the cosine of theta would be 4.5 over 7. 4.5 over 7 is 0.643. Tangent would be 5.362 over 4.5. That's 5.362 over 4.5, 1.192. All right, the cosecant, that would be the hypotenuse over the opposite. 7 over 5.362. 1.305. Secant would be 7 over 4.5. 1.556. And cotangent would be 4.5 over 5.362. 1.112. The only time I ever used a trig button on my calculator was to get that side. After that, it was all square roots, addition, subtraction, and division. Only needed a trig button once. You could use your trig button a whole bunch of times, or you could use it once, or somewhere in the middle. By the way, I'm going to get all these fee values the same way I got the last time, just by exchanging them. And so, if I take the cosine of theta, I move 0.643 down to the sine of phi. Take the sine of theta, now that's the cosine of phi. All right, so instead of narrating each and every one, I'm just going to write the numbers because you've seen me do it once. Tangent is cotangent, cosecant is the secant, secant is the cosecant. And the cotangent is tangent. 
Okay, so there it is for the second triangle. All the values in their entirety. All right, last up, third triangle. <clears throat> third and last. So this one, I gave you two sides and no angles. How evil of me. So since I've got A and B already, I'm going to go ahead and write them in. A is 4, B is 3. By the way, I know A and B are interchangeable among triangles, but I specified my format. If you have them switched, that is forgivable. I just want to make sure that you don't misunderstand why I'm stating those as fact. And then C would be a square root problem. Uh, hopefully you recognize a triangle and you don't even need to do it, but just in case you do, 9 plus 16 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So that means c is equal to 5. This is the 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Without even getting the angles, I'm going to do the trig functions. I, I've been starting with theta this whole time. I think theta is feeling a little left out. I'm sorry. Phi is feeling a little left out. I, very left out. I can't even remember its name. So I'm going to start with the angles phi. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's 4 over 5. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 3 over 5. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, that's, I don't know, is that wrong, mixing decimals and fractions? Maybe that's wrong. It's like I'm wearing clothes that don't match. Cosecant, that would be the hypotenuse over the opposite. 5 over 4. Secant, that would be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. 5 over 3. And cotangent, that would be the adjacent over the opposite. 3 over 4. Okay, well, time to switch this up. Let's take the phi values and get sine, uh, I'm sorry, theta values out of them. This point 6 belongs up here now. This point 8 belongs down here now. This 4 thirds actually belongs here. Cosecant, that would be the new secant. So I put 1.25 there. This secant 5 thirds now belongs here at cosecant. And the last value, that 0.75, that 3 fourths for cotangent is now tangent. The last thing that we need to do is find those angles. So how do we find those angles? Well, knowing that, for example, for theta, that the tangent of theta is equal to 3 over 4, the way to get this by itself is to do the inverse of that. So you can just take the inverse tangent of both sides. That is, the inverse tangent of the tangent of theta equals the inverse tangent of 3 fourths. Just noticing that's out of focus. These cancel out. So you're left with theta equaling the inverse tangent of 3 fourths. So what is that? The way that you get inverse tangent on this kind of calculator is second tangent. 36.870. 36.870. That's the angle, 36.870. I do want to double check though. Instead of using tangent, what if I had used cosine? 4 over 5. Is it the case the inverse cosine of 4 over 5 is the same angle? Yes, it's the same angle. Good, 
870, that would be theta. And for phi, yeah, you could do 90 minus 36.870, but I feel like using a trig function. I used tangent and cosine before, now I'm going to use sine. The sine of phi would be 4 over 5, so I'll do the inverse sine of 4 over 5. It's 53.130. Just to be clear, if the sine of phi is equal to opposite over adjacent, I'm sorry, the hypotenuse, then the inverse sine of four-fifths must equal that angle, and it did, 53.130. That is in focus. The last one.